Hi, everybody. Welcome to the DevOps Lab. I'm Damien Brady, and we are recording live from Build. Today, I'm joined by Deepak and Vinod. What are we talking about? Hey, uh, today we're going to talk about continuous availability, which is uh, basically extending the CI CD and uh, bringing the high confidence into the CI CD pipeline. It's very cool stuff. Don't miss it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the DevOps Lab. I'm Damien Brady. We are recording live from Build 2018. I'm joined today by uh, Deepak and Vinod, correct? So there's been so much stuff that's been happening at Build. Uh, one of the things I noticed last week, though, was this global dashboard that you use for Azure Health, right? So this is very cool, and we'll put some links in the show notes. But um, what I'm most interested about from a DevOps perspective is how do you get this availability dashboard to be always up and running, right? This is a really important thing, right? So I'm interested in the DevOps uh, process of getting from your code into production and getting that running. So you were, so you were talking to me a little bit about a uh, continuous availability, right? Yeah. What is continuous availability? Let's start there. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, a little bit of context here uh, about uh, the continuous practices we have in place in the more uh, DevOps world uh, mm -hmm. about continuous integration and uh, continuous uh, de delivery and deployment uh, is more about uh, having the build uh, going continuously as continuous integration merging into the master as uh, the developers in the team check in, mm -hmm. and then take it further. We have a continuous delivery setup of uh, testing that, uh, uh, deploying it, uh, or delivered it in the staging, and then from there we deploy it in the uh, production pipeline, right? Which is where yep. the CD kicks in. So that's uh, uh, typically we have done. Uh, so what we have practiced with this uh, in our project uh, lately is uh, we said uh, not only we do gonna do CD. Uh, mm -hmm. After CI, we're going to uh, extend it further uh, to what we call continuous availability, which is basically not only deploying the bits to the same set of resources, yeah. but let's create the resources from the start. Like, so it's taking it a little bit further, right? So yeah. continuous integration is merging your code. Continuous delivery exactly. is having that deployable. Continuous deployment is actually deploying that out. <laughs> but you're including not just the application, but everything required, all the infrastructure required. So when you do the deployment, it's like a brand new imprint of the entire environment, correct? Exactly, and that's where we, we are seeing the value is uh, uh, the ability to uh, do that from the scratch, uh, commissioning the whole uh, resources, the dependencies the application needs, like key vault and uh, uh, storage and uh, the kind of dependencies application needs, th those are commissioned as uh, the pipeline goes. And mm -hmm. uh, the continuous part is interesting because we do it, as I said, with every PR uh, getting created. When it get complete, this thing kicks in. Yep. So if you have multiple check-ins in a day, you're exercising that. You're not relying on like the traditional cadence of uh, testing or doing the drill of how your resources uh, got uh, created. Right, so I think, um, Vinod, you're going to show us this in a second, but that, that's a really interesting point, the, the PR process of every single time there's a change, and that change eventually is going to make its way into master and make its way into you know, the, the deployable app, app actual you know, artifact thing that goes into production, right? Exactly. You're testing everything before it even gets merged back into the main code base. Exactly. Like so spinning it right up from a hole. Yeah. Right, and and that's a good part. Is a, a very good side effect which we saw, and we see a tremendous value in the visualization apps like us, uh, mm -hmm. where it is very important beyond screenshot. As a PR reviewer, mm -hmm. I have an ability to actually uh, see the application, play with it, review the PR more thoroughly, and see what is in there rather than looking at the screenshot. Okay. Right, and then. The same pipeline which we exercised for the release, we are just uh, uh, bringing it uh, in the uh, before and doing it with the PR creation. Okay. That's uh, we have done it. But uh, that may be a concern with few people if they, their uh, build time is more and release time is more. So sure. that's something to caveat. Uh, there is. Uh, to watch for if uh, you want to do it uh, more in the release. Mm -hmm. And if you have an optimized build and you can live with that, your SLAs are good enough, you can bring it to the PR creation. Okay. Why don't we, um, why don't we actually have a look at what you've done? Because you use sure. VSTS to do this deployment. Um, yeah. Vino, why, why don't you show me what this process actually looks like? And then maybe we can talk about it a little bit more. Sure. 
cool. So basically what I'm going to do is uh, walk through by our build definition steps and release definition steps and yep. explain what we are doing over there. Uh, so basically every time a PR is completed, uh, we build all our apps and create a deployment package for it. We also include our uh, deployment script, ARM template, and test scripts, and then package it and publish it as an artifact to VSTS. Uh -huh. So this artifact will be used by the release definition steps. Okay. So let me switch to the release step here. So this is our uh, release uh, definition steps. Uh, so what we are doing here is we download the artifact from the VSTS and execute the deployment script. The deployment script basically is preparing all the inputs that is required for the ARM template and then execute the ARM template. One of the things the deployment script does is that it selects a random region every time and then deploys the ARM template to that region. Okay. So uh, once the deployment is done, we get the new app endpoints and then we run the end-to-end -end test scripts on the new endpoint. Okay. If the end-to-end -end test passes, uh, we switch the production domain to point to the new app endpoint and delete the old resources. Okay. If the end-to-end -end test fails, uh, we fail the release and delete the new resources. Okay. So this is the release process. The build is pretty standard, right? You're building the artifacts and you're building the ARM Correct. Yep, template, but the release itself um, can you just run through that again? Yeah, sure. So what the release uh, pipeline does is that it downloads uh, the artifact from VSTS uh, and executes the deployment script. What the deployment script does uh, is that it prepares all the inputs required for the ARM template to be deployed. One of the things uh, it does is that it selects a random region and deploys the ARM template in that region. That's, that's interesting. I'm just going to st stop you there. So sure. that, so you're picking a random Azure region and deploying the application to that random region. For every release. For every single release. So yeah. is, what, what, why? <laughs> like, what, what's the reason behind that? Is this a, is this a deliberate thing? Oh, it yes. sounds deliberate. Yeah, why? Yes, it is. Uh, like Deepak mentioned, we want to exercise all the regions as well as in, right. when we are trying to release every time. So that's deliberately a part of it. That's very cool. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I didn't mean, to, didn't mean to interrupt your flow, but that's a really interesting point. Yeah. Okay, so you're, you're building all the artifacts, sorry, you're building the environment, you're deploying the artifacts to the application, Correct. and then if it's successful or if it fails, like what, what happens? So uh, once the provisioning is successful and we get the new endpoints, mm -hmm. app endpoints, we run the end-to-end -end test on it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, only if the end-to-end -end test passes thoroughly, uh, we switch the production domain to point to the new endpoint. So it's a it's a true kind of uh, blue-green or you know canary, and then yeah. work out that it's working, and then DNS Correct. switch to the new environment. And do you tear down the old one? So we delete the old one later. Delete the yeah. old one. Nice. Um, you mentioned as well that there's this. PR process. So this happens on every pull request. So we also have a scenario where, like Deepak mentioned, if uh, if it's an optional scenario, if you require it, we can. What we can do is we can run this whole deployment pipeline for every PR creation or updation. So let me quickly show you. Uh, one of our PR here. So what happens is when I created this PR, our whole deployment pipeline runs, and the app endpoint that was created with yep. the new resources is automatically added to the description of the PR. So within a few minutes, you get a link where you can just click and see the change. Wow. So this is this is kind of taking it to the extremes, right? Yeah. Where you, you have your application. Uh, People make a change to the code, submit a pull request, it builds the entire environment for the right. changes you've made, gives you a link in the PR description, yeah. and then like straight away you have access to the change that people are making. Right. So you can click around if you want, approve it, you know, in its real environment right. yeah. before even getting that code back into master. Uh, right. Yeah, and it kind of also tie back to early feedback, right? Like as, mm. as any PR uh, does, right? Taking it to the next level where if there is any issue with the, the environment, right? There is a good chance that you will get it here. Like yeah. the, the P, this process will fail and uh, you will not, you will get a uh, notification that the whole process fails very early in the cycle when we are creating a PR. Right. So it, it's tremendous value. And we are using it. Uh, it's not something we have done like just now. It's mm -hmm. been like more than six months. Uh, it's part of our day-to-day -day PR process. Nice. So one thing I was going to ask as well, yeah. um, maybe you, Deepak. Uh, 
how far can you go with this? Like, we, we, this is a web application. It feeds data from Azure, I guess. Yes. Um, but how far can you go? A lot of applications will have databases, and they'll have other third-party services and exactly. so on. Exactly. Um, how much can you do here? So uh, I would say it's more uh, uh, very uh, straight uh, applicable to web apps, uh, like app service in Azure, uh, which is exactly how we did it, uh, both as a web app and API app. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but if you want to extend it for uh, stateful systems like uh, database or having transactions in system, and then you want to uh, do this approach, that's something uh, you can extend that to. And that's something we can build on top of it. But yeah. what we have done is more in a web app scenario. Right. And uh, yep. uh, the takeaway I want to give is, uh, uh, is really a good uh, approach or the design and where to think about it. Like, and then you can implement in in the context of your application. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, um, any final words, uh, pieces of advice that either of you have for people looking at doing this kind of process? Yeah. So if we can talk about the uh, like the value props. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. Uh, uh, like. One of the key thing is uh, it kind of articulates when we talk about this is uh, the high confidence, right? Uh, you are uh, in a very high confidence zone with when your application is running. That goes back to the availability aspect. Like it is a uh, you ensure like uh, it is available in different regions, right? And mm -hmm. uh, you are doing the whole thing uh, from the scratch. Uh, so confidence building on on like uh, regarding the availability is, is the key here. And then yeah. uh, doing a random region deployment as you. I like that. That's yeah. one of the thing uh, which adds to it. Uh, so uh, all of all of this really is about adding confidence to the deployment process, which exactly. is what we're all about with DevOps, right? Right. Okay. So, uh, so when you're looking at doing this, uh, that is the thing to focus on. Um, how can we be confident that when we put this in production, it's actually going to work? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Any yeah. any other final words, Vinod? Uh, Not really. No. <laughs> we, the biggest uh, challenge that we had yeah. was uh, when we had to uh, do HTTPS binding on our production domain. Okay. That was the challenging part uh, because there is no direct API where you can just uh, call for the app service to do the HTTPS binding. Right. But okay. it's all a learning, and uh, it's, it was a good uh, learning for us. So there's still some rough areas and things that you look out, yeah. might need to look out for. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys, for showing me this. Um, it's one of the coolest things I've seen, this gigantic dashboard. And we'll put some show notes in there so people can see them uh, if, if you're interested. But otherwise, uh, thank you so much for joining me. Thank and, you, uh, Yeah, we'll see you next time on the DevOps Lab.